At number 8, the Battle of Wuhan. Between 1937 and 1945, China and Japan fought each other in what became known as the Second Sino-Japanese War. The conflict was mainly fought on Chinese soil where Japan had a history of invading and occupying territories. During the war's early stages, its largest, longest and most significant battle took place. By the time the Battle of Wuhan began in 1938, several major Chinese had already fallen to the Japanese including Beijing, Shanghai and Tianjin. But Wuhan, the country's second largest city at the time, was still under Chinese control. Consequently, Wuhan became the Republic of China's de facto wartime capital. With its economy increasingly threatened by burdensome military costs, Japan decided to try seizing control of Wuhan by forcing Chinese resistance into submission as quickly as possible. In early 1938, the Japanese High Command ordered troops to close in on Wuhan from the north and south in preparation to attack the city. But the operation didn't go as quickly as the Japanese hoped. The Chinese fought back intensely, and it took several months for Wuhan to fall. By the time Japan secured its victory, both sides had incurred heavy losses to the tune of 400,000 Chinese casualties and 140,000 Japanese casualties. In the end, the Battle of Wuhan did little more than prolong the war and leave both sides mutually exhausted and depleted of resources. A strategic stalemate followed as the rest of the war was fought in the form of smaller, localized battles. Number 7. The Allied Invasion of Normandy On June 6, 1944, 156,000 Allied troops stormed the coast of Normandy, France in a mission to free the country from Nazi control. Famously known as D-Day and codenamed Operation Overlord, it's remembered today as one of the largest amphibious invasions in history. More than 21,500 paratroopers landed along Normandy's beaches during the early morning hours to prepare for the seaborne assault. In the meantime, amphibious vehicles and landing crafts brought troops as close to the shore as possible, at which point the soldiers disembarked and charged toward the beach. Wave after wave of Allied troops arrived throughout the day and even after the initial invasion. By the end of June, an estimated 875,000 soldiers had disembarked at Normandy. The campaign was extremely successful, marking the beginning of the end of the war. But the D-Day invasion came at a cost to the Allies, who suffered at least 10,000 casualties on the first day, with 4,414 confirmed dead. Many of the soldiers who died hadn't even reached land yet, or had just arrived at the beach. The 78,000 German troops in the area lost 1,000 men, and civilian casualties are estimated at 3,000. Operation Overlord failed to achieve some of its objectives, including the capture of several Nazi-occupied coastal villages. But the Allied victory paved the way for continued successes in France and elsewhere throughout the war. Number 6. Battle of the Somme In July 1916, British and French forces embarked on a joint mission to defeat the Germans on World War I's Western Front. It began with an Allied attack along the upper reaches of the River Somme in France. On the first day alone, the British suffered around 57,000 casualties, including over 19,000 deaths, making it the bloodiest day in British military history. The fighting continued for 141 days, with an estimated 3 million troops participating in the battle between both sides. By the time the battle was over, Allied forces had penetrated 6 miles into German territory, marking their largest territorial gain in two years. But the French military operation's objectives to capture Peronne and Bapaume and to break the German line went unfulfilled. Over a million men were killed, wounded or captured throughout the Battle of the Somme. The exact number of losses on each side is disputed to this day, along with the battle's necessity and significance, as well as its impact on the war. The British Imperial War Museum's website describes the battle as a strategic necessity during which British commanders learned valuable lessons that would contribute to the war's eventual Allied victory. It's an opinion shared by many despite the Allies' failure to break the German line. Opinions on who won the Battle of the Somme are also divided, with some experts labeling the outcome as indecisive. Others subscribe to the belief that the battle ended with an Allied victory despite the immense costs of their gains. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these. At number 5, First Battle of Kyiv 
The first Battle of Kyiv began in August of 1941 as part of the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union, known as Operation Barbarossa. In what became known as the largest military encirclement in history, more than 500,000 German soldiers surrounded Kyiv with tanks and on foot with intentions to capture it. Numbering around 700,000 at the beginning of the battle, the Red Army initially fought back fiercely in an attempt to break the encirclement. But it soon became clear that they were at the mercy of the Germans, and within a month of the invasion, Kyiv had effectively fallen. Soviet troops nevertheless continued to fight despite their dwindling resources and manpower. Some units tried to withdraw and were killed by the Germans. Altogether, Soviet losses totaled around 600,000, including both civilian and military deaths, those who were taken prisoner, and people who went missing. Only 15,000 troops escaped. Around 400 Red Army tanks were destroyed by the Germans, along with nearly 350 aircraft. Operation Barbarossa proved to be a major failure, arguably due to Hitler's decision to attack Kyiv and other cities before targeting Moscow. But the First Battle of Kyiv marked a decisive German victory that came at a massive cost to the Soviet Union. Number 4. The Battle of Verdun World War I's longest battle, known as the Battle of Verdun, took place on the Western Front in France from February 21st to December 18th in 1916. Believing that the Allies would soon be majorly strengthened by British reinforcements, German General Erich von Falkenhayn set out to crush the French army. He targeted the ancient fortress city of Verdun, located along the River Meuse. The battle began in the early morning hours with a massive German artillery bombardment and a steady advancement of troops. By then, thousands of French soldiers had relocated to Verdun in anticipation of the attack. During the first phase of the battle, around 500,000 German troops attacked the French defensive line at the village of Douaumont. Despite the massive number of Germans, the French managed to hold their defenses. Upon realizing that the Allies were preparing for an attack on the Somme, the Germans kept the Battle of Verdun going as a way to slow down and disorganize the Allies' plans. This presented the French with the challenge of continuing to fight at Verdun in hopes of exhausting the Germans while effectively preparing for the Somme. Throughout the battle, the Germans captured numerous French strongholds including Fort Douaumont, the village of Vaux, the village of Cumières, and other areas. But the French refused to surrender, and the fighting dragged on for months in a resulting stalemate. The battle turned in favor of the French about halfway through, with the successful crushing of several German advances and attacks. Over the following months, the French retook much of its territory that had been captured by the Germans. By the time the battle ended in a French victory, the Allies had suffered over 370,000 losses and German casualties numbered around 337,000, making Verdun one of the costliest battles in human history. Between 40 and 60 million shells were fired throughout the 10 months of fighting, and nine villages were left completely ruined. Number 3. The Battle of Manila The Allied effort to expel the Japanese from the Philippines during World War II lasted from October of 1944 to August of 1945. During that time, American forces saw the worst urban fighting that took place in the Pacific Theater throughout the entire war in a month-long engagement known as the Battle of Manila. It started on February 3, 1945, when American troops approached the capital city from all directions. The bombardment came as a surprise to General Tomoyuki Yamashita, the commander-in-chief of Japan's forces in the Philippines. He had devised no plan to defend Manila, which contained a large number of flammable wooden buildings and was home to around one million residents. Upon receiving word of the American advance, Yamashita ordered his troops to destroy vital bridges and installations and evacuate the city. But Rear Admiral Sanji Iwabuchi ignored Yamashita's instructions and instead ordered the 12,500 men under his command to prepare defensive positions, cut down trees to form a runway, and get ready to fight. A growing number of Japanese soldiers committed to resisting the Americans, who were aided by Filipino fighters. The battle's worst fighting occurred during the Allied capture of a power plant near the banks of the Pasig River. The Allies also took control of the historic Manila Hotel, a police station, two churches, Manila City Hall, and a post office. The Allies won the battle, but their victory came at a cost of massive bloodshed, and the city was almost completely destroyed. 
An estimated 100,000 civilians lost their lives despite only around 1,000 American troops being killed and 5,565 being wounded. Japanese losses were counted at 16,665, but were most likely higher. Number 2. The Battle of Stalingrad From August of 1942 to February of 1943, Nazi forces fought for control of the city of Stalingrad in southern Russia. Known today as Volgograd, the city was of major strategic importance to both the Allied and the Axis forces due to its location along the Volga River as a major industrial and transportation hub. The Germans saw capturing Stalingrad as a way to gain control of the Volga River and access the Caucasus oil fields at a time when their fuel supplies were dwindling. The attack began with a tank invasion and intense Luftwaffe air raids. By then, the Red Army was significantly weakened from its losses of both manpower and weaponry in previous battles against the Germans. On the first day alone, the Russians suffered around 200,000 losses. Heavy bombing continued as the opposing forces fought in the streets. Because there was no civilian evacuation of Stalingrad before the battle started, male residents were called upon to help fight while women were recruited to dig trenches. But even with their help, the Nazis continued to wreak havoc on the city, effectively reducing it to ruins. Within a few months, Stalingrad was mostly under German control, and only around 20,000 Russian soldiers remained. Still, the Red Army refused to back down. The Russians eventually secured a victory with the help of vital reinforcements, who encircled the remaining 300,000 Axis troops in a two-pronged approach on both sides of the city. The blockade cut the Germans off from supplies, causing them to starve and run out of ammunition while Russia's brutal winter conditions set in. Hitler refused to let his troops surrender even after it became clear that the battle was a lost cause. By the time the fighting ended, the Axis powers had lost more than 500,000 men, including 91,000 soldiers who were taken prisoner. But the Red Army's victory came at a huge cost to the Russians, to the tune of an estimated 1.1 million casualties, including tens of thousands of civilians who were killed and tens of thousands more who were taken prisoner and ultimately died in concentration camps. Despite these massive losses, the battle marked an important turning point that turned the tide of the war in the Allies' favor. And at number one, the Battle of Berlin. By April of 1945, the city of Berlin had already been pounded relentlessly by Allied bombing campaigns. In a bid to capture the city and seek revenge for the suffering of the Soviet people, one and a half million Red Army soldiers encircled Berlin. By then, the Nazis had killed an estimated 25 million Soviet civilians and military members. But their power was dwindling rapidly, with a beleaguered force of just 95,000 German soldiers left to defend the city, including extremely young and elderly men. On April 16th, the Soviets attacked ruthlessly in what would become the war's last major offensive in Europe. By the 23rd, Berlin was completely surrounded by the Red Army. At best, all the Nazis could do was slow the Russians' advance. The Red Army overwhelmed Berlin with firepower, firing an estimated 2 million shells and leveling buildings with rockets and grenades. In the meantime, Hitler remained holed up at his so-called Führer bunker and continued ordering commands to fight the Russian siege at all costs. When it became crystal clear that Germany was not going to win the battle, he took his own life. The city officially surrendered on May 2nd, and the fighting ended on May 8th. German losses were estimated at around 50,000, and the Soviets counted over 80,000 dead or missing soldiers. Thanks for watching. Which one of these battles shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.